Okay, so I think we're ready to get started. Hopefully everyone has audio. Um, if not, the intent is that uh, we will upload this to our training website. Um, the intent of this uh, training is for us to fulfill the requirements um, both for our policy review, but uh, primarily uh, to meet uh, Washington safety standards for firefighters. And um, Robert, I'd just like to go through those. I know I have forwarded those to you previously. They are uh, also listed as reference in our policy, but um, I'd just like to uh, identify what it is that our intent is. Uh, what uh, 296305 indicates is that the employer must provide the necessary equipment and ensure that the body armor fits properly. Employees are trained in the use and limitations of the body armor, and the body armor is worn when necessary. With that, um, I would like to review what our policy says as it relates to uh, the necessity of use. Um, keep in mind that there could be some revisions to this in the future. Uh, under policy 1.4001-1, response to emergency and non-emergency incidents uh, under 4.4 body armor ballistic vests. It says the use of body armor is indicated in incidents when personnel are staging awaiting law enforcement. Ballistic vests are not intended to be donned on routine incidents, i.e. medical MBA rescue fires where there is no indication of hostility. Donning a vest does not make you bulletproof or somehow protect you from a violent encounter and therefore the first act of personnel should be to retreat, leave the scene and find a safe place until law enforcement can secure the scene. Four, the ranking fire officer will make the final determination during questionable incidents. Five, the code word full PPE shall be used over the radio to instruct West Thurston Regional Fire Authority personnel to don ballistic vests. Six, body armor shall be used in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendation. Seven, body armor shall be correctly fitted following the manufacturer's recommendation and shall not be used beyond manufacturer's warranty. Eight, an after action review shall occur on all incidents where the ballistic vests were done. That's the end of the policy as it relates to body armor and Robert I'll turn it over to you uh, for uh, proper sizing fitting and then if you can also discuss limitations of the best okay <clears throat> the the F1 was designed it's actually the only best in the industry currently that was truly designed as a one-size-fits-all for our for fire and EMS personnel um, as far as sizing goes, uh, I'm presuming everybody on the call has a vest at their locations, or are they just viewing the one I have? They're viewing the one that you have. We have one at ours. Uh, we will distribute them uh, before the end of the week and make sure there's someone at that location to properly uh, train them, uh, or they will have watched this video prior to donning the vest. Okay, okay very good. It, it was really designed for simplicity of use. It, it is almost error proof, although there are a few little nuances to fitting the vest on a person properly. Um, obviously, if you've ever been around any ballistic vest, proper fitment is roughly from just below the clavicle notch, which on most uniform shirts would be the first button that is buttoned on a collared shirt, not the actual collar, but just below. It should be about two inches below all the way down to approximately the navel or extending beyond that. Um, with the length of the vest, obviously on smaller personnel, it will extend beyond that. Um, 
if you look at the vest, obviously there's a left and a right side completely covered with Velcro, as well as a liftable full front pocket, which will be your adjustment for the waist. In the shoulders of the vest, there's the strap, which is completely accessible. It slides in and out based on needed fit. And as you can see, there are actually two D-rings on the back of the vest. The majority of your personnel will need it in that second range all the way through the back one, which is where we suggest you leave it for the majority of the time when the vest is on the vehicle uh, or however y'all are going to stage these vests in the truck just for ease of use. As far as putting the vest on, for proper fit. when it's in just the normal state, it lays nice and flat. You can put it anywhere in the vehicle. There are a couple of different things we've seen as far as people donning the vest. My suggestion is because most of them seem to be kept in fire trucks, my suggestion is the guys can even do it sitting in their seat by leaning forward just a little bit in which they will throw it over their shoulders. It'll be sitting there fully relaxed. From there, grab the shoulders, pull up just a little bit, not full force because like I said, you want it seated just below your clavicle notch here on the front. And then from there, it should hang down somewhere from the belly button to extend it beyond that. From there, pull up the flap and hold it with the one hand. Adjust your straps down on the side. Pull the flap down. The vest should fit nice and snug on the body. And it's done. As far as larger or smaller people, we'll start with the smallest while I have the vest on. If you have particularly small people below probably a 26, 27 inch waist, maybe even smaller than that. We put an additional flap here on the front that's Velcro. That pulls down and what that does, it allows your waist to come over a little bit further. So if you truly have to wrap the vest beyond where it should go, when this gets folded up, and this is easier to do with somebody real small wearing the vest, it allows this to fold over the top and this to grab, and it keeps the waist from sliding through. Okay. <coughs> So, the, uh, in, in all my travels throughout the country, I have found only one or two personnel on fire departments or EMS that would have the need to utilize that flap because it really it, it is for a really small person. Other than that, there's more than enough security in the size of this vest with the Velcro to lock it down into place. You get uh, double the protection in some locations where it's doubled, is that? Uh... <laughs> yeah, actually some of the smaller people could even possibly get triple dead center depending upon how far over the, uh, the front flap overlap. So from there, as far as it's, as far as extending it out for the large personnel, obviously when you put it on, the waist is going to be dictated obviously by the girth of their stomach area. We suggest a maximum extension out if you're putting this on so that roughly the edge of the Velcro right here hits and aligns with the edge of the vest on the back side. If you have any personnel in trying to vest on them as you're going, let me know. If anybody needs to extend out to where this is just barely hanging on, it obviously won't secure well out in the field. 
we make a piece that will cover this gap to help it secure down and into place. Do you have that piece with you? I, I do not have one with me here. But it, it's, it's a very simple piece. It actually just lays and Velcro attaches <coughs> right over the top of this. Looks just like the basket. <coughs> Is there uh, a ballistic uh, component to that extension? No, sir, not at all. Simply because your ballistics work all the way to the edge of the vest. So, and, and when, when I say it's at the edge, you're roughly, you're talking about approximately two inches here of hanging on, that piece will be made to wrap over here. Sure, okay. What, what we don't want to happen is for somebody with too much girth in the waist to be moving in this, Granted, it's mill spec Velcro, but we don't want it to pop loose while they're in the field uh, on a call out. So, as well as from there, from the shoulders for the larger guys, because I'm sure y'all probably have a few of the larger bodybuilder type with the broad shoulders, it's made to quickly, if, if your vest is sitting in a normal state in this position for the larger guys, you obviously can get to an extension point to where this is no longer feasible. They can then just pull it out quickly and it will allow the shoulders to expand out substantially further. So you're uh, suggesting pulling it out from that first uh, yeah. frame? Or if, 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 the, if the user has the vest on in the normal position and he feels like it's kind of choking him a little bit, then he'll need to come out of that back strap, which only takes a second, and adjust it so that he can extend the shoulders a little further and drop it just below the clavicle notch. Okay. And then when it's time for storage again, obviously you'll just put it back in the truck, but I, I've been recommending to most departments because of the varying sizes, unless you've got several really big guys on uh, a certain position on a vehicle, put it back into the normal position and lay it back flat. Do you have uh, storage bags? We, we do, we do make a bag for them. Um, it really winds up a matter of preference for the agencies um, as to where you're going to put them. Usually if they're being stored in the back of a vehicle uh, in one of the compartments back there, um, the, the department will purchase bags to put them in. Uh, if they're stored in the cab of the truck, obviously, and I don't know how y'all's trucks are set up. Um, a lot of them are storing them between the driver and the rear facing passenger seat. Uh, and then others are putting them in boxes that are built into the trucks as well, that are large enough to hold the vests and, and helmets or whatever other options. Um, were purchased. Okay. Uh, we can talk about that maybe uh, later. Um, okay. That is the uh, bags that, that uh, we may need. Okay. Yeah, we, we designed a bag that will hold two uh, because most of the trucks are, are have four riders, so they'll put two on uh, driver's side, two on passenger side in one of the rear compartments. Um, that way when you stage prior to arriving at a scene, they get out, put them on before uh, actually going to the scene. Okay. Um, so from there, as far as rifle plates and the upgrade feature there, uh, that is something that most of the departments will stage rifle plates in the vehicle as well because the majority of calls are obviously handgun threat um, and and most of the guys really depending upon policy uh, they're not utilizing the plates unless there's a true active shooter style event so really it's a pretty simple process of just lifting the front and rear flap which are identical drop the plates in into the front exact same thing in the back and they're ready to go. They're secured on the inside. They don't float around and then put the vest on as you normally would. Or you can install the plates with the vest. On. <coughs> okay, and then what about uh, spike uh, plates? We, we do offer spike plates. Um, we, we made them. We offer a level one, two, and three. I typically carry 
a level two spike plate, which I'm going to presume is in another vest. Uh, but we do offer them that in a 10 by 12 configuration, the same size as rifle plates that sit inside there. Uh, the, the ballistic, as far as because it's a Kevlar based vest, they have a stab slash resistance, not stab proof. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, obviously they're not bulletproof, they're bullet resistant, uh, designed to defeat certain rounds in the industry. Um, and, and same thing with the stabs, uh, the stab panels that go in here. Um, can, the, can you uh, cover what the limitations are with uh, this vest as it sits? Uh, so currently we don't have rifle plates or uh, spike or stab plates. Okay. Uh, we uh, may acquire those uh, soon. Okay. But uh, can you, for uh, purposes of identifying limitations of this uh, unit, uh, it is a level 3A, correct? Yes, it is level 3A, which is basically the NIJ test the products. They shoot a 357 SIG and a 44 MAG in excess of 1,400 feet per second, which is well above uh, SAMI spec, which is the small arms manufacturers. Um, so as far as those two rounds, the, the 44 for size is, is to me more to measure the blunt trauma on the vest, which cannot exceed 44 millimeters. And the 357 SIG is more for a fast, smaller round, uh, which would be more for the penetration. Um, as far as special threat testing on this vest, we've shot the Winchester 127 plus B plus uh, and several other rounds from a 40 cal, obviously the 357 SIG and different variations of the FN57. Uh, on top of that, we felt it important to include full mil spec fragmentation testing on the vest as well. And, and if at any time you needed full documentation on all the rounds that we've shot at it uh, and the testing and stuff, we'd be happy to provide those to you as well. And, and as, as far as the overall limitations of a vest, one of the things, it, it, you know, it's kind of like with law enforcement, one of the biggest issues is the coverage of the vest. Obviously, where there's no ballistic material, uh, there, there's really, you don't, you don't have the stopping capabilities. Um, so, so really the limitations wind up in the fit, which we think we've covered roughly 99% of the fire and EMS population uh, or first responders that wear this vest as far as size. Uh, to date, since we released it, I've only found two people that could not fit into the vest exactly the way it was, um, the true anomalies in the fire service. So unless you've got somebody roughly over six foot seven and 400 pounds, the, the one gentleman that was too big for the vest was an absolute monster. He should have been a middle linebacker for a football. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, can you talk about the manufacturer's guidelines for care, use, and maintenance? As far as general care, um, obviously, preferably kept in a cool, dry place. Um, you know, the heat variations, because obviously a lot of ballistics and stuff get stored in the trunks of patrol vehicles throughout the country, um, you know, in excess of 100 degrees, and, and we can't really control that, but optimally, a cool, dry place. Um, as far as the way the vest sits in the vehicle, we prefer that it either stand up straight or lay flat, either one, because it helps keep the integrity of the ballistics, keep them from bending up too much in any form of sliding around inside the carrier. Um, we, we, we built this well enough so that, that we should never have any problems like that unless your guys just start wadding them up inside the vehicles and throwing them into uh, different spots. Um, as far as the care uh, and, and the cleaning of it, if you're going to wash the vest on the inside, there are Velcro closures. The ballistics are completely removable from both the front and the back. Okay. 
As, as far as the removal, it's really just they pull straight out uh, both the front and the back panel, which will leave you with an empty carrier. Secure all your Velcro back down. You can separate the front and the rear. Remove the ID panels on the front and the rear. Make sure all your Velcro is locked down and put it in a washing machine on a gentle cycle uh, with a very mild detergent or hand wash. It's up to you. As far as drying, uh, prefer hang drying um, or you can put them in. A lot of fire departments have these large commercial dryers that will circulate just air. They'll, they'll hang inside the dryer and let the air circulate around it till it's dry without heat. Uh, you can do that as well. Um, we, we don't recommend washing with any turnout gear, anything that could be contaminated with, uh, uh, with anything that, that might be detrimental to a firefighter wearing the vest. So just a, a standard washing machine, like I said, with a, a mild detergent. Fantastic. Uh, I think we have covered the requirements unless there's anything else that uh, you typically uh, train first time users on. Uh, otherwise, what I'd like to do is I'd like to see if anyone uh, tuned in has questions that maybe we miss. Sure. I got a question. The question is UV degradation. Is there any risk of that if it's left, uh, say, in the seat of a vehicle for a prolonged period of time? The, the only issues with UV uh, would potentially be to the external carrier. It might accelerate some of the fading in it. Uh, which is inherent of all materials in the category. But as far as the actual ballistic component, in the vast part of NIJ 101.06 was all the ballistics are now completely seam sealed in a waterproof membrane. Uh, so there, no water can get to them. As far as the cleaning, if you want to clean these after y'all been out on a call for a long time and you might have sweat, the Cordura is treated for water repellency. With this being a waterproof membrane, when you go to wash the carrier, take these, uh, just use a sponge, you know, a damp sponge and wipe this down. You can use a mild soap if you want, uh, very diluted, wipe it down, rinse it off, and you can either pat it dry or let it stand up. And like I said, it is a waterproof membrane, so there should be no issues with that. Thank you. Any other questions? So, uh, Robert, uh, again, have we covered everything that you typically would cover with new users? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, we will end the recording and say thank you very much. Uh, we will take it from here. Not a problem. Y'all have any in questions? contact with you about the uh, rifle plates and uh, maybe the uh, bags to carry these in. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you a bunch, and we do appreciate it. It's so, uh, any further, give us a call. Yeah, it's a good product. Uh, the one size fits all uh, factor of this uh, saved us a substantial amount of money. Thank you. That's what we were after. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Y'all be safe.